And here we are again, wherever you are, morning, evening or night. But we're going to say good day from down under. And I'm Harry, the learning difficulty expert. And with me is the wonderful, inestimable <laughs> Sally. <laughs> hey, Harry, it's Sally. From, I'm a holistically fit specialist. And you staying warm today, Harry? How's the weather there? I've got my possum jumper on. So in case those of you that don't know, maybe in different places, possums are a very common um, animal which have thrived after settlement in Australia but <clears throat> in New Zealand they don't like them they regard them as something feral and they um, they use them to make the most beautiful jumpers they are, so, I, I have incredibly warm possum socks that was the thing when I went to New Zealand I couldn't believe that everything was made of possum because here they're protected and there they're not um, possum socks are particularly warm lovely but that looks nice and cozy Harry mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, well, it's warm because they're hollow fibres. Oh, right. And that's why they're warm. And uh, you, you can you can buy them online from New Zealand. And they're really beautiful. Beautiful. They like, last about five years. Yeah. So I recommend them. Yes. Get yourself a possum jumper for the winter, particularly <laughs> if you're in North America. Where it's really cold. <laughs> yes. Good tip. But we're not going to talk about cold today. We're going to talk about flexibility and mobility, which I know is one of the things you're really passionate about so I love it I love it I love it I mean for me stretching is key with all my clients number one thing is stretch and breathe because you know you're you function so much better when you're more flexible and when everything's moving you're not yeah that's right let's just roll our shoulders roll oh that's good nothing but a good stretch hands above your head Sitting in your chair and sitting up straight and rotating. Uh, oh, right yeah. the sky. And I love grabbing the chair and pulling oh, myself very in like that. Oh, very twist. Yeah, lower back stuff. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, how much older do you feel when, you, when you're when stiff? You know, when you're more flexible, you actually look younger because you're not all you know, stuck in spots and feeling stiff and old and getting up out of a chair is a hassle. When you're more flexible, it just gives you so much better quality of life. And um, yeah. yeah, and that's just before we even get to the mobility. So, you know, we were talking the other day about flexibility and it's all about just lengthening out the muscles, stretching them out a little bit more so that you have yeah. them more manageable. Oh, stretch. <laughs> Yeah. I like that. And mobility is all about, you know, functioning of the joints and the range of movement that you get out of your joints. So your shoulders and knees and um, that sort of thing. So mobility and flexibility are very intertwined, but it's really important to um, work at it, isn't it? It is. And if you don't work at it, you get pain yes. and you get um, suffering. And I, I came across a 2012 study in the US, which is probably pretty relevant to to here yep. national health survey people were asked in the last three months if they experienced musculoskeletal pain so it's pain in either a bone or muscle or a ligament 52 mm -hmm. percent of them reported musculoskeletal pain 29 percent in lower back 18 percent in knee and 15 percent in neck and then there were upper limb sh uh, shoulder yep. hip and so lower limb they're but so good. over half the population is experiencing pain. Yeah, yeah. What was the lower back pain one? The lower back was um, 29%. Sugar. That's, you know, that's high. I and work in an osteopathic clinic and that would be the main reason why people come. Yeah, that's what... They come it... shuffling in looking like old men and old women. Yeah. And they go, they shuffle out and the next day they're probably better. Mm. It's, we weren't designed to stand up. Right. Okay. But um, the banks are too long. Yeah. Is that interesting? Yeah. But then once again, sitting down, it's about your posture. So you, mm. you're very stuck in one sort of position, you know, hunched over and, um, you know, pulling yourself back and strengthening that lower back is really important. And um, yeah, shoulder, the joints to watch, absolutely, your shoulders and, you know, um, the knees. I think we are talking the other day about some. Um, you know things that are affecting our joints and weight is one of them so oh my goodness weight yeah that's right you've got to carry it on your joints absolutely and i i, I assess kids for posture you know and I, I ask them well you know 
if you've got, you know, um, if you've got a posture like this. Yep. And mm -hmm. you're slouching. Yep, slouching. Yep. What, what is it doing for you? Where are the stress points? So we talk about, you know, the stress points being, you know, at the neck, at the top of the neck, where the neck joins the head and, and at the hips, and then, of course, down on the knees. Yes. And, you know, I'll poke him in the back and I'll make a joke about, I wish somebody would make a chair with a spike on it. <laughs> so when they sit back, they hit the spike. And some of the kids say, yeah, that would be cool. I'd love a chair like that. <laughs> I mean, leading on with, with kids with um, bad posture, but also with being overweight, it's, it's, it's causing a higher incidence of um, knee and ankle um, reconstructions in kids. Like, would been unheard of a number of years ago and now it's getting up there and you know a lot of kids are playing the ball sports like the basketball and the netball and um, all those sort of things fast action moving and with the extra weight on the joints twisting them around it's no wonder there's a higher incidence of knee and ankle injuries didn't you say the other day about toes but, but, something about toes yeah toes are an issue but just generally on a comment you've just made, I think some of the schools, particularly I have to say the private schools, mm. are a grave in pursuit of um, winning challenges mm -hmm. between their school and other schools. And mm. so they push kids really hard. Mm. They, they don't care if they get injured as long as their school team wins. Mm. And I think that's something as a parent you need to be aware of and protect the welfare and the bodies of your own children mm. if they're really good at sport because the school may not. Mm. Well, it's true. High competition is rife amongst, you know, <laughs> well, I know from my kids' schools, it's full on, it, particularly with the boys' schools, it's huge. Yeah. But coming back to um, more importance around um, mobility and flexibility, you know, balance is another important area to focus on out of all of this, particularly as your age and your, your balance tends to deteriorate if you like so it's something that um being needing to focus on the balance um and practicing on the balance just from simple stuff you we spoke about it the other week um like walking heel to toe or standing on one leg um and then yeah so if you're flexible it gives you mobility but but if uh, like i remember my mother-in-law used to walk up to us from where she lived, which was about half a K, and yep. it was a slight incline. And one day, for whatever reason, she tripped. She didn't have the strength and the flexibility to save herself and fell over mm. and did a face plan on the pavement. And she never walked up to us again because she lost confidence. confidence. She was shamed by falling over in public. And um, so it's really important for confidence and, and for quality of life to be able to move. Absolutely. And part, part of being able to balance is, is about being able to recover before you fall over. Yeah, totally. I mean, and what is the confidence that, that you lose and also the fear as well of like, oh, what might happen again? So, mm, absolutely. Um, and, yeah. you know, that, that's one thing that I work on with clients, particularly in their 70s, is it doesn't take long to get that balance going and, you know, you do it with kids, don't you, on that? I've seen it on the wooden board. Like really a... quick. Really quick. And you can see an improvement in 60 minutes with a kid. You know, yeah. they can master. I put them on a balance board. I get them to, you know, juggle stuff. And uh, they're, they're doing it in 60 minutes mostly. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. that, those balance balls or, you know, I call I use BOSU. What's yours when I'm called? They're all the same. There's the semi-circle. Uh, yeah, we get them manufactured in, in Asia. They're, they're a hard board with proprioceptive dots yep. and we get the kids to stand on them in bare feet and um, then get them to do something while they're on the board so that they're engaging visual system and motor as well. So don't just get them to balance. So get them in pairs ideally um, and they'll be throwing bean bags between each other. And, they, you know, the, uh, the yardstick is for me, they have to do whatever exercise I've given them, they have to do it 30 times without a fail. Then we can go on to the next thing. Yeah, awesome. do that really quickly. Yeah. I also use the Dura discs, which are single discs, so you can put them under the feet individually. And that's, that's very tricky, and we do exercises on that. Um, 
Yeah, very, very cool. Yeah, I haven't, haven't tried that. Mm -hmm. But balance is important. But I mean, flexibility, I mean, every day we, you know, tie up shoelaces, we get out of bed. In my case, you know, you lift the grandkids up in fun because they scream with joy. Yeah, yeah. You want to be able to go on doing that. Well, absolutely. And, um, it, you know, it's just like picking stuff up off the floor, kids' toys, bits of Lego, whatever it is, you know, getting down and it's not getting stuck down there. I mean, part of that also is associated with weight. So, you know, if you're an average weight, if you like, or whatever, you know, just working on your flexibility. And I really recommend doing it in the morning when you're waking up. You do it, don't you? You have a bit of a stretch in the morning while you're muscle. Oh, I do. I, I, well, after what we talked the other week, yes, I do a little stretch. I get out of bed and I do a little stretch. And because I'm really good at... I'm actually not that fun. I don't take, I don't find exercise a great deal of fun. I don't like going to the gym, no, but I do need to exercise as part of my. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is I do my press ups in the morning and I do them before my shower, but so that there is no, there are no excuses. Mm, okay. And so I'm still in my gym jams. I get up and I start off with one um, press up. And then I thought, well, I can do that after a couple of days. That's easy. You know, keeping nice and straight, up, down, up, down. And then I did two, three, four. And that's a simple now, Yeah, you start. Now I, now I do a minimum of 20 and usually 25. You're a legend. Yeah. And you've just recently yeah. had a birthday. And how old will we be, have turned now, Harry? Oh, guess. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me think. I'm 68. You are in 68. You know, and it's 68, you're, yeah. You're, um, just a living uh, monument to, to everybody to say age is no limit. And, you know, as you said, you started off with one push up uh, and then went to two and you've built it up to like 20. It's awesome. And you're, you're moving every day, you know, fair enough. You haven't, I got you to the gym yet, but that's only a matter of time, <laughs> but you're moving, which is the start and you're being flexible and, you know, you like running up the stairs at work. And, you know, I do. I love running down the stairs too. Even better. I love the shock. I love the shock through my feet and up through my body. And I love that. I remember when I was a kid, one of the things I really loved, and it was, this was before I reached puberty, and I realised it was special at the time, so I really valued it. We used to go to France every year, and, and we, uh, there was this river which we went to every day, and I would run along the river stones as fast as I could. And I remember the wind in my hair, and I remember thinking, this is so cool that I can do this. <laughs> and I've kept that love of the wind in my hair. So it's, I find it awesome to run down the hill. And I realise now that intuitively my body likes that because that builds bone. It builds bone density, that shock of a foot striking down, the whole body shaking. So that's something I love. And particularly for people at risk of osteoporosis. Absolutely. And my dad got it. He yeah. bent over to pick up. Um, uh, a pot of uh, tomatoes and he fractured three vertebrae in his spine. Oh, how old was he? He would have been in his uh, late 70s. Yeah, which is young yeah. these days, you know, and then yeah. incapacitated like that. That's what you don't want. So being flexible now just helps you for down the, down the future. One of the things that I love in my gym is the foam roller. Have you used one of those? No. No, oh. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> you can get different different wedges on them, <laughs> different widths, whatever. But you, I start with rolling all of the back. You're getting it in along, down the spine. You have them at long ways. You roll up and down, getting in, in around the shoulder blades, into the lower back. Um, it's just awesome. It's basically a, it, you're giving yourself a massage. It's myofascial release. So you're working on reducing all the tight bits mm. in the body, in top to bottom, you know, in your calves, right into your glutes, ITB, TFL. Oh, it's awesome. And then definitely opening up, opening up. If you line it long ways with your head down in the end, arms up and over, you're opening up your chest, but also getting in around your shoulder blades. And oh, it's wonderful it's just brilliant and it just gets everything moving and flowing and helps you know get rid of the waste within the body breaking it all down and just getting that uh, i mean you sleep better when you're more flexible you sleep better and it helps reduce stress it gets everything flowing it gets the oxygen flowing more optimally throughout the body 
and as I said, removing waste and broken down gunky bits in your muscles, it helps it all flowing. Flexibility is awesome. So you actually feel younger and you look younger because you're not looking old you and stiff. Yep. And you, you, you've got more vitality and energy because everything's flowing better and moving better. And, you know, it's hard to stop. Feeling young is much more fun. And life should be about fun. It should be enjoyable. You know, you don't want to be walking around feeling like an old person. No. Um, I, I was walking along the river the other day and it was, it had been raining yeah. and the river rocks were coated with slime. And it was very slippery and I had slippery shoes on. I was walking really carefully because I didn't want to fall in. It was a cold day. Yeah. I wanted to take photos. So I got my phone down, leant down and put it above the water to get the reflection of the image and that. And I just thought, I'm walking over these rocks like an old man. And I hardly <laughs> ever feel like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you don't want to be feeling old before your time. And I remember one of the bits of advice my dad gave to me before yeah. on the eve of my marriage, actually. And that was nearly 40 years ago. So it was good advice. Yep. It fell on fertile ground. And he said, and I'll read it, so I'll look away a bit. He said, a tree survives in the wind only because it bends. If it were rigid, it would snap at the first strong gust. And that applies to us both in a marriage in terms of our relationships, and it applies to the physical body. If it's not going to flex, something's going to break. Absolutely. If you get a stress. You know, that, that's what I often, clients will come in and they're super stiff, particularly men, just um, very, very tight hamstrings. And I, if there was one client, I couldn't do anything with a stretch with him for three months because he was literally going to snap. And it's yep. so true. You've got to get it nice and malleable and moving and all that sort of stuff. You know, a lot of people have very tight hip flexors from sitting in the postures that we were talking about before and, you know, having issues with the tight glutes and hamstrings so there's lots of things that you can do every day just while you're sitting at your chair like you know taking your ankle onto your knee and leaning forward and stretching out the lower back and into the glutes and um hip yeah. flexors just a forward lunge and um yeah. lots and lots of stretches and yoga is awesome because it's about holding that stretch didn't you throw some facts at me the other day about um the length of a stretch I mean, I when, when, when I did my diploma, my diploma, I was taught that you should hold the stretch for 30 seconds to enable those muscle fibres to lengthen. Yep. So if you do it in under 30 seconds, they, they won't lengthen, but they lengthen significantly if you can hold it longer yep. than 30 seconds. So yes. you're, feeling, you're feeling the stretch in the muscle. You're not bouncing. You're mm. just feeling that gentle uncomfortableness and you hold that. Yep. Which is very much in line with yoga. But um, the other point regarding that is that you need to breathe into your stretch. So as you're breathing in the energy and the oxygen, you're then directing it as you're breathing out down towards that muscle that you're trying to lengthen and stretch. So that it aids more oxygen in there, helps the process coming through. So um, yoga is very much in line with the connection between your breath and the, the movement and the, the muscle that you're um, attuning with and allowing it to gently ease into it. And that's what, you know, fle being flexible or stretching is all about. It's not, you can't, you have to be mindful of what you're doing because then, I mean, you can overstretch. So, you know, yeah. most people know. It's, it's, that mild, it's that mild discomfort, no more than that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Tai Chi is another good one for doing that. Any, any gentle Eastern system of movement mm. is going to be well based mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, one of the things that i see a lot of people come into our clinic for are bad necks mm. that's because they've got the t the screen at the wrong height yep yep you know that their their desk ergonomics are all wrong yes i mean laptops are atrocious for uh -huh. that yeah if you don't have them on a stand they're way in the wrong place they're far too low so you're going to be looking down like that you put stress on Oh, on top of your neck. it's terrible and it's everywhere i said in my kids all the time i'm always pushing their head back and um you know whatever it is sitting in the car reading whatever the heads are always down um and then there's then then, then of course there's the uh, the smartphone posture walking to school looking like that <laughs> and the un last the un last week has defined um smartphone addiction screen addiction as a disease are you kidding me? No, last oh. week. Oh, yeah. 
Whoa. Whoa. I mean, that's not just for kids. That's for adults too. Goodness me. Well, I should know that. I, I have to take games off my smartphone because I waste too much time. It's the only way I can manage it. What, what game? I know, I do. Oh. I, play, I play solitaire and I play a train game, but there was another game which was kind of interactive and that was terrible. I had to take it off. Yeah. I mean, they're built by neuroscientists. They're built by very bright people who understand that if we generate dopamine rewards, and yeah. serotonin rewards by winning that that's such a beautiful reward feeling and we get addicted mm. and if we can addict kids we've got them for life we've got a revenue stream for life mm. if they're not able to discipline themselves yeah it's a real worry look i know amongst my peers <coughs> social media is a shocker you know facebook Instagram, yeah. linkedin twitter yeah. not even into snapchat and all the other stuff my kids are into yeah. so, i mean it's <laughs> yeah, we could talk about that. You're doing pretty. You're doing pretty well, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, look, I love this topic because you know you got to stay loose and limber up. It's just you know, and because you'll look younger and you'll feel younger and you'll feel better. It's it like a disease, yeah. and it's something. Yes, we need to be cognizant of it and and apply ourselves and do it regularly. But that's like anything; it doesn't come without putting in the work. And it doesn't have to be bad. There's nothing better than having a good stretch and feeling awesome. I, didn't we just talk about like in the shower from the moment you start up, just start stretching, warmth of your muscles from the bed or in the, sh you know, we <laughs> few issues in the shower, but, you know, just with the heat on your, the water coming down your back and, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and, and if you feel yourself losing flexibility or reach mm -hmm. or mobility, then that's the time to start working on it. Gently, and if you don't know what to do, go and find somebody like Sally, and they'll help you with a structure. If not, you can download stuff on the internet. There's lots of good apps for what to do if you want to work on a particular muscle group. But yeah, flexibility keeps you active, accident-free, and awesome, like awesome. Sally. That's what we want. Awesome. We want to get that range of movement in it, so that it's, you're not it's restricted. You know, we want to flow yeah. and feel awesome. As you said, it's great. Yeah, it's great. I, I remember once I got a frozen shoulder and um, the doctor said to me, look, there's two ways we can do this, you know, and I don't know whether it's going to work. He said, if you get a towel and wrap it around your arm, put it over your shoulder and you yank it up as hard as you can. He said, sometimes that'll resolve it. And it did in that case. Yeah. Then I got another frozen shoulder in the other elbow and it, in the other shoulder, it didn't work, so I had to have you know lots of osteo and stuff. But yeah, with frozen shoulder, the the script underneath that is that something something unresolved emotionally. Emotionally, absolutely. So that's often something you have to work on as well. There's always an inner journey as parallels the physical. Totally, every you, you, every ailment is linked to some underlying emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if if you're feeling restricted. And you haven't got the flexibility in your body, you probably need to go back and delve into your childhood and see what it is that's constrained you. That's mm -hmm. probably the way you were brought up. So that's life's work, isn't it? Good work, Sally. <laughs> yeah. We're all a work in progress, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. But flexibility is about resilience. Mm -hmm. It's it's about being able to move. It's about being able to stay young. It's about being able to stay independent as you get older. And it's about being able to do the gardening, being able to clean the house, do your shoes. And, and not being... Travel. I was, I was going to say, seeing on, on planes and that sort of thing. I know I've just been to Fiji and that trip wasn't too long, but you're still feeling a little stiff and sitting in the same place for such a long time. So long haul flights, really mm. important to have big stretches about that. And as you said, it's better quality of life. Who wants to be relying on other people because... You, you're too stiff and bent and need support and assistance or on a Zimmer frame. It restricts your lifestyle. You know, it's... Um, how, how are you going to carry the... How are you going to carry the shopping if you're on a Zimmer frame? I don't know. I know. Or <laughs> even more in those electronic little bike things, you know, the scooter things that you see. Oh, they'd be fun. <laughs> you go about 50k <laughs> an hour on the footpath. I'd love one of those. Yeah. <laughs> you got all the other... We could... We could, we could could do the old Mad Max stuff, you know, treatment on it. <laughs> oh, I'll give you a race up and down this road here. That'll be hilarious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then how you get upstairs, you know, all that sort of stuff. You know, it, it's a lot of 
disability then and it's yeah another whole sphere of issues of um yeah impeding your yeah you have to look for yeah we don't want to we don't want to go there no. And look, age is just a number anyway. It's it's about how you look after yourself now for how you'll be, you know, preparing yourself for down the future as you're very well proving. <laughs> so we're going to roll, stretch, stretch and twist after this, Sally, aren't we? Absolutely. I'm really ready for it. I'm really ready for it. That's yeah. very, I like that one. What did you do? Roll, stretch and twist. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you for having a little chat about this today, Harry. It was awesome. If anyone awesome. Um, wants to leave any comments and like or inquire about any topics, let us know. Always open for ideas, aren't we, Harry? We are. We are. We're very flexible. We love to talk about anything that interests you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because whatever interests us usually interests other people. So, yeah. Yeah. World. And next week we're going to talk about something really exciting, aren't we, Sam? We are. We're going to talk about the stories, the scripts that we tell ourselves that limit our yes. wonderfulness. Yeah. Oh, I've had some doozies in my life. So have you, I'm sure. <laughs> so we, we, Sal and I are going to be really vulnerable next week. It's going to take a bit of courage, but we're going to do it for you. Yeah. yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> the unveiling again. <laughs> it's all part of it. <laughs> <laughs> look, look forward to it, Sam. Yeah. All right. Well, have a lovely week, Harry, and I'll speak to you next week, Don. Will do. See ya. Okay. Bye then.